Wexford and Kilkenny is a great rivalry and the brilliant thing about the comeback um, ever since Davy Fitz took over especially with Wexford is this brilliant rivalry as you can see here exhibiting the Orga retro wear jerseys that we have they're actually class and you can order them on the site with a 15% discount there the hashtag our game is the is the promo code but one of the beautiful things is Remember 2004, of course, the Mick Jacob Blake yeah. goal that we talked about before, and we will again. But I spoke with Eddie Brennan about it. At, he played at the time, and he was talking about what sticks in my mind after the picture was the picture of Cody falling on his knees, and what a famous picture that was. Yeah. Jesus, what kind of a match was it that caused him to go down on his knees after? And what was he doing there? Like Beside the goals. Yeah. yeah like the, if anyone saw it, the goal goes into the net, and just beside the umpire... Cody kind of he kind of jumps up and drops on his it's knees. Unbelievable! It's so I, weird. I've never seen like of it. I'd say, I'd say he didn't share a board with Peter Barry for a while. Peter Barry, brilliant catch yeah. from an Adrian Fenland line ball in. Brilliant catch. Threw it up was a bit delayed. And Mick Jacob, like, not if you tried it a million times would it happen. He perfectly blocked the ball, and when the ball hit the ground, caught it on the hop. Swung it to the left. James McGarry kind of fell to the ground as well. It was unbelievable. Funnily enough, like, because Kilkenny would have half been robbing Wexford that day. Yeah. Wexford were outstanding that day. The same day that Owen Quigley put over that out. No, no, no. Was that, it was, not, that no? was the following year. Oh, that, that was the following year. That was put Wexford 173 ahead. Ah, right, yeah. Sure. But you know, Adrian Fenlon, I did a piece with him for a match programme for the 2017 Leinster final. He admitted that he was going for a point at sideline <laughs> cut. He said it probably was going for it, and then that ends up happening. It's an amazing though. Like that, the Wexford jersey, this retro jersey, is so back to the future. Like that's what the current jersey is yeah. now. The crest is obviously a little different, and they have their sponsor down there. It's amazing mm. how the jerseys are going back to those old traditional styles, the the best styles, really. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Adder slick now. Um, any other particular brilliant memories from Wexford Kilkenny games? Yeah, uh, growing up, like Billy Byrne was a figure that you tried to mimic in the garden. I'd say when I would have been, what I would have been ten, eleven, when he kind of not when he burst in the scene, but when he when he burst in off the bench anyway in ninety six and ninety seven. The ninety seven one, ninety seven Leinster final really stands out. It was funny because Tom Dempsey said uh, years later he said you know winning the All Ireland in ninety six was just something unbelievable like Liam Griffin came in they trained like monks they did like unbelievable circuit training to music and everything and they had Neil Fitzpatrick in as psychologist he said but it nearly meant as much to him to beat Kilkenny in the Leinster final the year after as it did to win the All-Ireland just because not too sure he hadn't had too many wins over them and mm. I think it was the first win in a good while sure, didn't Clare say the same but when the Munster final in 97 because this, this time they got to sew it into Tipperary and then got to do the same <laughs> in the right, All-Ireland yeah. like Kilke or Wexford were the, were, the, were the poor relation there with Kilkenny like as I said the Black Stairs would separate the two but they were, as the Galway boys always say, they were on the hind tit like for years. They mm. couldn't get a result against well, them. Well, the, the, I think the result over the year, it's kind of like in nearly 80 championship matches, something like that, it's almost 55 wins for Kilkenny, 22 mm. or 3 or something like that yeah. for, for Wexford. So it's definitely very heavily skewed towards oh, 100%, Kilkenny. yeah. Like Tony Doran said uh, many years ago, talking about the rivalry, he's like, some days we won most days we lost and that was the way mm. and that was the way with the rivalry it always was but Kilkenny and um, they border a huge amount of counties and like again just back to Eddie Brennan because I interviewed him about this particular rivalry and he goes the Wexford border runs from Greg the Manor the whole way down along to Schlieveru as much as our tip neighbours in the northwest are Ballingarry and Killinall the Glenmore or Mullinavat lads would have gone to school in good council yeah. and they'd talk about Jesus, they're our neighbours, so we don't want to listen to them. So it's typical border rivalry too. Yeah, what he wants to be one of the current ones <coughs> was that would have went to, to good council as yeah. well. And is actually in a syndicate with a load of those boys. They actually sold a horse to JP McManus recently. Cerberus, a good horse. He is was that involved. Tyke Furlongs? Yeah, yeah, they're involved yeah. in that as well. So he'd like they'd have a great affinity with a lot of those Wexford lads. And yeah. going to school with lads and then coming up against them on the pitch is always a good one. Just back to Billy Byrne again. I never forget him bouncing the ball off the sod. Uh, it was just it was absolutely iconic and everything about him the Tom Selleck moustache everything about him just an absolute Porn iconic star figure moustache. let's uh, call it a spade yeah, a spade yeah. it was absolutely iconic yeah that, there, that's kind of looking back to that time that's probably my abiding memory of that rivalry mm -hmm. yeah anything else in particular um the 2017 well, match was yeah 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 because yeah. that was the one where Davy Fitz um, where he was in that glass <laughs> glass cave the custom made uh, two way mirror glass cake yeah. uh, where he could see out and nobody could see in yeah were you were you there that no, day no I wasn't there yeah. that evening so I no. was there that day and uh, JJ Doyle who was a selector at the time and I 
can't remember if it was Saoirse Bolfin, but there was three of them in there, as far as I remember. <laughs> And like, you never was, know what's going on in there. Yeah, it was just so <laughs> odd to be there. Yeah. And you're looking at this thing with the two-way mirror and it's plonked right up in the middle of the press area. And you're thinking, this is a place of work for me. And you see this yeah. little, huh? It's it's just, just, again, back to the porn mustache. <laughs> it's like a porn little booth where you're looking out. It added so Not much. Not that I know. To, yeah. <laughs> it added so much to the drama of it as well. Like in the fact that the cameras would point up and they couldn't see <laughs> yeah. they couldn't see him. But like, you know at the end when they won and it was like a brilliant win, he came out, yeah. pooping yeah. and hollering with the arms up in the air, and there's that iconic, in the middle of the yeah. press area. <laughs> and there's that iconic picture of Conor McDonald jumping on him, isn't there, in, yeah. the, in the hallway after, I think, Ray McManus, the sports file got. That was an unbelievable win, because, you know, it was early that year, Wexford had been absolutely flying in the league, and I suppose the reason that Davey ended up uh, in that box was hitting off Jason Ford earlier on that year. Yeah. But everyone, he remember he said after the beat goal, he's like, you know, chill the beans or whatever. <laughs> and there was a great little tune made to it or whatever. Yeah. But there was no chilling the beans after beating Kilkenny that night. Don't think they'd beaten him in championship since 04, to the best of my knowledge, before that. And taking hammering after hammering. Yeah, actually. yeah, loads of hammerings. And I think they beat them in... in Nolan Park that year in the league for the first time in a long time oh, as well since the 60s yeah and Wexford yeah. Park was jammed it was sold out that night Lee Chin was lifted shoulder high and absolutely like I remember we, did we, he burst Wally Walsh with a shoulder yeah he bursted stage. a few people that yeah. night he was mercurial like he couldn't do any wrong we talked about like brilliant performances earlier on this year in different segments and we neglected to mention that because that was absolutely mm. phenomenal which game did Henry Shefflin score the, the ball came across him and he just doubled on it in the penalty oh. area Oh, yeah. Top corner type. I'm pretty sure that was against Wexford. Can't remember yeah, that. Someone, yeah, someone might remind us of that. Eddie Benny Brennan Bennett. put one in from about 25 yards on Damien Fitzhenry. It didn't even look like a goal was on one year as well. An extra final, probably around 08 as well. A lot. There was a lot of hammering, so you kind of you tend to remember, you know, the 04 game or the 17 yeah. game. But Wexford was absolutely rocking after that. Like that was an unbelievable win. Yeah, I won't mind. Colin Fenley did everything possible. To, uh, oh, to yeah, go against them that night. Taken down for two, a penalty. two penalties. Yeah. Two penalties. Yeah, Liam Ryan night, getting yeah. booked. Sean Murphy was sweeper at the time. Pretty sure he got booked. Um, yeah, it was great stuff. Do you know, even last year in the 2019 Leinster Championship, the fact that it went down to the last day and you, you had all of Galway, Dublin, Kilkenny and Wexford all could get through. Yeah, yeah. And it ended up being a draw down in Wexford Park. And of course, the two teams got through to the Leinster yeah. final. You have that great picture. <clears throat> I don't think Cody knew the result. And Davey was like this facing him after trying to explain, yeah, 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 trying to explain yeah. the result. Yeah. I was I was in Parnell Park that day, and I was funny. It was real, and I said it before. It's like the last day of the Premier League when you know there's permutations going on, and Man United are playing here, and Man City are playing there, and United thought they had the title, and then Aguero pops up. Yeah, I know yeah. it's not quite as dramatic because it's Leinster final day. But that right? was the only result that would have seen Galway, the previous year's Leinster champions and all Ireland yeah. finals been knocked out. Tough and city. They were standing on the field in Dublin like waiting for the result and then it came out. And, and they're standing there kind of waiting and Dublin know they're true so the whole crowd has invaded the pitch yeah, and they're going yeah, insane. Yeah. There's that great picture of Chris Crummy. You That's know, right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the, the, they obviously met in the Leinster final. I don't think it was the week after. Maybe two weeks later. Oh yeah, it was pretty soon after. Yeah, it was two, yeah. two or three. Weeks and then after. it was the, there was that outpouring of emotion after Wexford won their first Leinster title. Actually, since all, since all four again, it was unbelievable. And uh, just Davies three years, and that was kind of that was the culmination up to mm. up to that point. D- that run from Rory O'Connor that led to the penalty. I think it was Enda Morris he pulled him around, and Mark Fanning yeah. came up and buried it. And it's such great tactics from. Wexford that day. It'll be interesting to see if they change from it where they just played within 100 yards of their own goal because Porrick Walsh was the spare man back for Kilkenny. He was standing on the D but they never drove ball so no. far up the field that he could get himself into the game and also the puck outs were straight down on top of his head in the yeah. central channel and if you were standing there underneath a the puck out and you've lads coming from all directions, your guys and uh, rival players, it's very hard for you to dominate. It took him out of the game, didn't they? Yeah. Took out, took, they, they hammered they the hammer. Like, yeah best player inside their own half of the field out again mm, that was yeah. a brilliant tactic um they're going to meet again as well like they're going to meet mm. this summer and you know Davey has always said like he measures himself against Cody you can just you always have that twinkle he always has a twinkle in his eye when he talks about meeting Cody because you can tell he's his managerial idol and he measures himself against the highest of high standards and basically he measures himself against him yeah, not a bad recent record against the meter. Very good recent record. Of course, record. Clare weren't getting far enough in the championship for him no. to measure himself during that era. I'd say Cody would have loved to wrap off him back then. You know, yeah. In 14, I'd say he would have loved to wrap off him. Because, <laughs> like, Cody would never say it, but he must 
think this little this little lad I, I'd love to put this lad back in his box so to yeah, speak that's true what about like we've looked at rivalries in the first couple of videos in, in, in our Orga series like we were just trying to think up of who's better this person or that person you know and you were like well who's similar to TJ Reid that you could compare on the Wexford side and who's similar to Lee Chin on the, on the other side and what have you but we thought a good one was Who's a better goalkeeper, Damien Fitzhenry or Owen Murphy? Yeah. Two absolute goats, it must be said. And like, you know, I'm going to push for the Wexford side of things here, but I have said for a few years now, since probably 2014, that Owen Murphy is possibly the greatest of all time. But Damien Fitzhenry is in that conversation too. Damien Fitzhenry is, uh, was in probably the best era for goalkeepers, I would say. Precisely the point, yeah. Brendan, Brendan Cummins, Cummins Don't Cusack, Davey Fitz. Davey Fitz. Yeah. yeah, and then you, ha- you should have him thrown in on it as well. How many All-Stars? He has two All-Stars, which during that era, when, like, it's yeah. not as if Wexford were winning All-Irelands every year. True, yeah. Because if you true, get yeah. to the All-Ireland final, and obviously Kilkenny proved in their massive years of dominance when some of their goalkeepers actually didn't win All-Stars, that success doesn't guarantee All-Stars for yeah. goalies. Because normally, you know, Brendan Cummins probably won a few All-Stars on the basis of the team not being great in front of him, so he had so much to do. Yeah, yeah, very true, yeah. yeah. Very true, yeah. For, to me... Owen Murphy is not only the best goalkeeper playing now, by a decent stretch, I think he's the best of all time. And I think that status will only grow. He's 29 now. I just he could be in goals with Kilkenny until he's 36 or 37. Yeah. At least if, if he stays fit. Well, part of it, uh, the brilliance of him is his mobility. And yeah. the fact that like you know that if the ball goes in there, he has the speed, the agility to just get out of a jam very quickly. And uh, that's part of the reason that he's so, his reflexes are so good because he's so athletic. Do you remember in the, was it the quarter final that Limerick beat um, 18, yeah. in, in 2018? Some of those saves from Galan. Now Galan put him in the real wrong place. He mm. put them where he could possibly get at them. But the reflexes. Unbelievable. 2014 All-Ireland. He's the reason that Tipperary didn't win the first day. Yeah, you're right, he made actually. made a couple yeah. of unbelievable yeah. saves. Um, that and Hawkeye, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> and Hawkeye has proven to be wrong time after time. So. I think um, he kind of invented the sweeper-keeper in Hurling as well, didn't he? Just with his mobility that he was able to get out that 20 <clears> yards. Particularly, yeah, in the last three or four years, you see a lot more keepers doing it, but I think he was one of mm. the first that was doing well, it. Stephen O'Keefe was definitely wandering from goal and looking for possession. And I think goal, a lot of goalkeepers now are moving outside the square looking to get the ball sort of halfway between the goals mm. and the corner flag. Yeah. She even saw Mark Fanning recently for Wexford against Dublin in the league when they went down to 13 men coming out looking for the ball and people right, celebrated yeah. Stephen Cluxon for doing that in the 2019 yeah, yeah. final. Yeah, very true. Yeah. And I, I think that is the next progression for the goalkeeper that you more or less have to be brilliant at the first thing that makes you a goalkeeper which is shot stopping and distribution but you also have to be an option out the field. Yeah. You know, it's moving that way in Gaelic football, yeah. Graham Riley. Rory Began, uh, Niall Morgan, Stephen Clucks. Well, Clucks and sticks yeah. to the goal now, but you know what I mean. I've never seen anything like a goalkeeper. Most goalkeepers are very predominantly one-sided, usually right-sided, mm. and you try and bring them to the other side. Owen Murphy is so natural off his left. He can strike at 120 yards standing on his weaker side. He's yeah. so he's so good. Well, the, I suppose he's an outfield player as well yeah. for Glenmore. That's and, true, yeah. Um, Funny enough, the, for Henry played outfield for Duffy Wexford... Roof. In the 96 league, uh, Liam Griffin wanted to sharpen him and wanted him to be fitter and wanted him to be fresh come championship, so played him outfield in the well, league. He never <laughs> looked like the most athletic. He looked like the no. sort of lad who just stepped down off a tractor. You Do know? you remember the jumper he had? Do you remember the yeah, Wexford yeah. jumper yeah. that used to wear goals on wet days? Ah, that was like absolutely iconic. But he'd slap the letter off a ball. I know you said Owen oh, Murphy yeah. can drive it long, but think of those penalties. He scored five goals for Wexford, a couple of them against Limerick. One against Tipperary, which broke my heart back in 2007. Yeah. The time Cummins was dropped and Owen Kelly didn't play either. Yeah, yeah, and I don't think Shane McGrath was started that day or he had been stopped or not started the previous day. Who would, uh, do you think Fitzhenry would work in the current generation? Now, th- this lad was fearless, no helmet, diving in front of, putting your head where you wouldn't put a Hurley type job. Would he work as well now? Because he's not, uh, you were just talking about how goalkeepers are more mobile. Would he work as well now? Because he doesn't seem as mobile but uh, maybe modern training he actually would be yeah he probably would be the, the, funny enough when you were saying that the one thing that sprung to mind was when they beat Kilkenny in 04 his one brief was with puckouts, hit grass 
just hit grass mm. and he did it absolutely <coughs> perfectly mm. and took the famed Kilkenny half back line out of it so his ability to do that you're thinking yeah this guy this lad had no problem picking a short puck out this lad had no problem picking out a wing forward in space so I think the fitness thing I don't think it's like it's like you know would would John try survive in the current generation of course he would because to survive you just have to be that bit fitter so I, th- I think he would genuinely I think he'd be a lot more fitter a lot more mobile not saying that he was mobile enough that time he ran back to the goal in 07 after scoring. Yeah. They scored two frees that there one. No, one that day. Limerick. Limerick. Yeah. Limerick in the yeah, quarterfinals. The 100-yard well, yeah. sprint. By God, it, look, it looked like effort to him anyway. <laughs> um, who's better though? Like, if you were going to give it to Fitzhenry, you'd have to talk about the fact that he did it for 17 years and pretty much the whole way throughout, he was just considered absolutely unbelievable. And did he, I don't think he missed the game. Was he consecutive? He was um, nearly consecutive I'm not sure if time. he did the whole way to the end, but like, there was definitely midway through the noughties anyway. I, saw, I was watching back some interview and he, he just hadn't missed a game. That's some run. It's a fair run, in yeah. fairness. Yeah, it is a serious run. I, I think by the time, as I said, by the time Owen Murphy finishes up, which he could get the goods of a decade, mm. um, I think he'll... And to be honest with you as well, when you're playing with not a weaker team, but in the last couple of years, he's been brought into action an awful lot more. And he has saved Kilkenny's bacon. Like, the great Kilkenny teams, James McGarry never got much credit because he didn't have that much to do. PJ Ryan, you, yeah. you, you, if you were to think about it, feels like PJ Ryan played one game ever for Kilkenny and that <laughs> yeah, was the uh, yeah, 0-9 yeah. All-Ireland when Tip made a hero of him. Yeah, and th- that was just, he got loads of, he got opportunities to shine and he took them and he kept them in the game and yeah. was able to win them in All-Ireland. Murphy got has... Got man in the match that day. Yeah, he got man in the match. Rightly so. Murphy has been... Kilkenny's one of Kilkenny's best players outside of TJ Reid the last five to six years yeah if they lost him if they didn't have him no. if, uh, I think they'd have won fewer games but you could say the same for Wexford oh you could no, they wouldn't I, have won that tip game how many games would they have lost at the other end without his unbelievable saves yeah no in fairness he was, he was class and as I said the big point is in an era of the best of the best it, I'd say I'd say Say, I, I would say he was the best of that era. Yeah. In an era of goats, he was bleeding loudest. <laughs> nice, but, I like it. Right, I still don't think he's the greatest of all time. I think Owen Murphy is, but it's a kind toss between the two of them. Well, let us know what you think. And don't forget, if you want to get these class jerseys, go to orgaretro.com and put in the promo code hashtag our game and you'll get 15% off. They are pretty tasty. Pretty sweet. Thanks for watching our game. Don't forget to like and share the videos. And if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe.